in Copenhagen. It's a May ceramics field trip. Danish culture has such a deep respect for craft and that is really felt deeply within the whole city. It's a bit of a ceramics mecca here. You can mooch around the city and find all sorts of cool shops here, from independent makers and their studio shops, all the way up to larger flagship design stores. Today I'm exploring the city and I'm gonna take you on a ceramicist guide to Copenhagen. We were in Copenhagen over a weekend at the start of April and I want to preface this video with the fact that I could have spent years looking around Copenhagen aka I genuinely think I could move there but we only had a couple of days and this is a little bit of the weekend what we saw what we ate and drank where we went and I'm saving my very favorite thing until last and oh my god I just want to apologize to any Danes watching for any potential mispronunciation in advance. Copenhagen is a very walkable and very bikeable and very trainable city. You definitely don't need to hire a car. We stayed in a hotel really centrally and so we were pretty much able to walk or bike everywhere that we wanted to go. We did get a cab on the first night um, to dinner because it was absolutely pelting it down with rain but if you get better weather then you can definitely avoid cars altogether. We hired bikes on an app which was incredibly easy and cheap. We have stayed before and we just stayed a little bit further out and we could just jump on a train for very cheap and get to wherever we wanted to go. Day one was our ceramics tour. I would suggest starting with breakfast kind of wherever. We found that there was great coffee kind of everywhere we went so that is kind of sorted. Don't fill yourself up though on breakfast because I'm going to show you some incredible places that we ate throughout the day. We woke up to an amazing sunny day and we headed a little bit north to where we were staying and we hit hay first. And you might be thinking, what the hell, I thought you were a ceramicist, hay isn't handmade, what kind of tour is this? Um, hey, maybe you're right, it isn't handmade. <laughs> but this list is full of ceramics, handmade mostly, <laughs> and this I guess is just a one random one that's not, but it's good design so I wanted to include them. Hay is a very influential Danish designer slash design house, I guess. It started in 2002 and since then they've been drawing influence from art, fashion and architecture to create their beautiful pieces. They make products kind of for the everyday and visiting the Hay House in the middle of Copenhagen was very inspiring. You can find hay pieces all over the world in very cool shops, but it was fun coming to this huge kind of flagship shop and looking at all the fun things that I want to deck my house out in but can't necessarily afford. The whole thing is kind of set up like a house, hence the name Hay House, and there's like little nooks everywhere kind of showcasing little areas in the home. Like this sunny kitchen here. It's spread over two floors and everywhere you'll look you'll see something cool. From Hay, we wandered a few blocks to find the incredibly iconic Studio Ahoy. You may have seen these little ghosts out and about. They were made here in Copenhagen. Studio Ahoy was created in 2011, kind of by accident by product designer Anders Ahoy. After a journey of design, these little ghosts got pretty famous and they allowed Studio Ahoy to grow pretty quickly into the well-known brand that they are now. These cups, bowls, vases and little creatures are all made here, literally in the store by professional potters. They sit in the windows of the store um, at their wheels, throwing and trimming, and then they glaze pieces in the back of the store. They've recently started making glassware too, which to me, having no idea how to blow glass, is incredibly mesmerizing to watch. Next door they have a little distribution space where they pack and send off orders that have come in online or to retailers around the world. For me, I really love how Studio Ahoy has created an in-between space of studio pottery and higher scale production. Some designers scale from making stuff themselves to sending their designs off to big factories to be mass produced. And this kind of feels like not only clever marketing to be able to see the makers at work, but honestly it's quite a special way to give buyers an insight of the work that goes into creating ceramics and glassware by including them in the making process. After Ahoy, we mooched our way around a little bit more and then we grabbed some bikes and went over through the canal to Nürbrühl. It was described to me as the hackney of Copenhagen 
if you know London, aka cool shops, loads of cool people, loads of creative energy. We were pretty hungry at this stage, so we decided it was the perfect time to stop for lunch. And we were very, very excited to try Poulet, which was briefly featured in the Copenhagen episode of the TV show The Bear and we had heard great things. I am a vegetarian, uh, a vegetarian who really misses meat a lot, and while they did have a tofu burger, I ordered chicken for the first time in 10 years. And honestly, I'm not being facetious here. The chicken's life was truly honored in this burger. It was literally the best burger I have ever eaten. You can sit next door in their wine bar, which is called Pompet, to eat, which is a nice little treat too. After this chicken burger glory, we crossed the road and we made a little visit to the gallery shop Matt. Matt is the store of artist Matilde Digman. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Matilda Digman. And we were very lucky because it is only open on Saturdays from 12 till 3. That was kind of an accident, but that was very lucky. Matilda works in loads of different media and her ceramics pieces that were on display here were very fun and honestly the whole place kind of radiated joyous, playful energy. Matilda has written two graphic novels as well and we were given a couple of these little flyers which are the rules of making, um, I think you should pause to read, which I have stuck to the first page of my notebook to kind of remind me to, I don't know, follow these rules, they're very helpful. A 15 minute walk away will lead you to one of the places that I was most excited about on our trip, which was the studio shop of Tazia P Ceramics. Someone who I have kind of been friends with, I guess, on Instagram for about eight years. Um, we've followed each other and messaged each other for a long time and so it was really nice to meet her in person and to see where she works and to see all of her pieces. Seeing other potters works is so cool and kind of seeing the way that they set up their studios is amazing. Because Tazia's studio is also a shop, she has to keep her making space really tidy and efficient and most of the space is dedicated to finished works. Mine is kind of the opposite. I have loads of space for making and I probably don't need all of that space for making, you know. I only have like one or two shelves for finished pieces. I bought a incredibly beautiful cup from Tasia, one that I already really treasure. It's made with a black clay and had a little mistake with the glaze. It was meant to be white on the outside but ended up being this incredible mottled brown and I have had my coffee out of it every morning since buying it. From here we had a pretty tight window to do the last of our visits but we also really fancied a coffee in the sun. So we had heard from pretty much everyone that we spoke to about Copenhagen that we had to visit Hart Bakery. And because we were in a bit of a rush, I didn't get great footage of Hart, but we both had a coffee and ordered a cardamom croissant to share. And it was crazy good, oh my God. You tear off these little cubes of pastry and they had the most lovely caramelized sugar with the warm taste of cardamom in each bite. Hart was started by Richard Hart, who was an ex-baker from Noma, and there are a few of the bakeries in town. And visiting places that were started by ex-chefs or bakers or whatever from Noma kind of became a bit of a theme in our food adventures on this trip. Ex-Noma chefs will go off and start their own thing, making Copenhagen one of the best cities in the world for beautiful food. After Hart, we made a quick stop, five minutes walk away to Inga Vincent Studio Shop. In this charming wee corner studio shop, we found the most amazingly light porcelain pieces and they're all hand built, all made there in the store. It was another really cool example of a studio shop. Being able to see where the work is made is really lovely. You could see some of the shelves in the kiln in the shop, but you couldn't see the whole studio, which is probably nice if you are a maker and you don't want to just be disturbed by the public all the time. But for me, being a nosy member of the public in that moment, I was very curious to see what it looked like. So I was a little bit sad not to see the whole studio, but the pieces in there were incredibly beautiful. Next up and last for our ceramics tour for the day was Clay Copenhagen which was another, it was like a five minute bike ride from there. And Clay is another studio shop, something that Copenhagen is clearly very good at. 
but it also had a collection of other maker's works too. It's run by ceramicist Tina Richter, who uses the space to make her work as well. I got there two minutes before closing time and I was in a bit of a mad panic, but Tina was incredibly accommodating and kind and welcomed me into the space and showed me around. I was so happy when she showed me all the way into the back into her workspace, letting me know that it was a bit of a mess as she was going to a market the next day, but truly it looked incredibly clean and tidy to me. I really loved the things on the walls, all the inspiration and the pieces drying. It was, yeah, really nice to see. We bought a cup by maker Vicky Veland. I hope that's how you say that. And Jack has been using it for his coffee since we got back, which is nice. Day one was pretty full and exhausting, even if all we did was see ceramics and eat food but we found a little pub and had a beer in their little garden and we just chilled in the sun for a bit before heading back to our hotel for a nap. The last thing that we did on day one was find somewhere for dinner. This place didn't come recommended actually we just kind of found it while searching around on a map but I honestly think it was the best restaurant I have ever been to. Bento Copenhagen is a Japanese restaurant near Copenhagen Central Station. Walking in, I was immediately hit with a warm and cozy feeling. Bento Copenhagen is a family-run restaurant spanning two generations so far. And I think the reason that this is now my favorite restaurant ever is because it was so full of heart. The service and the food and the atmosphere and even the prices were just completely top notch. I would recommend it to anybody visiting Copenhagen, truly the heart and soul that makes it so special. Day two was a bit of a rainy day, which was kind of lucky because we wanted to do something a little bit different today. We had lots of museums and galleries recommended to us, but none more so than the Louisiana Museum. It is a 40 minute train ride north from Copenhagen, which cost about five pounds each, not too bad. And I have been to loads of museums before and living in a big city like London, I feel like I've had some pretty world-class experiences. But, oh my God, Louisiana is just completely different to what I had expected and what I have experienced before. You enter through a beautiful old home and you're kind of surprised with this huge space when you walk in. There's a gift shop on the right and the museum entrance is to the left and there's a huge sculpture garden in front of you. It opened in 1958 and has a huge amount of art there. The museum is in a big loop, so you slowly move through this amazing architecture of hallways connecting each area and each little gallery. I say little, they actually are all huge galleries. And we stopped in the middle for lunch and I was expecting a, like a sandwich and a coke or whatever but it ended up being this incredible restaurant and we got a beautiful lunch sat outside and the sun just kind of came out and blessed us with its presence we had this like vegetarian open sandwich thing tomatoes and i think it was like a kimchi thing but it didn't really taste like kimchi some nice olive oil on it and it was it was fantastic the whole museum inside is breathtaking and full of art and very much worth visiting for. But then you go outside and encounter a huge sculpture garden and this insane view. That over there is Sweden, which is, that's wild. The entire thing ended up in the gift shop as well, which is a nice little treat. And I hadn't expected this, but we found loads of handmade ceramics, which just kind of ties this video all together in a lovely little bow. We made our way back to Copenhagen after that, had a glass of wine and headed out to our last dinner of the trip. Of course, we wanted to go to Noma, AKA the number one restaurant in the world. But listen, ceramics doesn't pay that well and frankly, we can't afford it. So we did the next best thing. We went to Popel Burger. It might be P-O-P-L, I don't know, but I'm gonna say Popel. This is a burger place that was actually an offshoot of Noma set up during the lockdowns when they had to close the restaurant. And they started like slinging burgers as a way to kind of keep things going and it was so successful that they ended up making it a permanent thing honestly it was amazing it was so beautiful pretty pricey for burgers i'm going to be honest but i suppose cheap for noma so you take the wins where you can <laughs> we decided then as we were like geographically pretty close that we should go and look at noma so we can manifest eating at the number one restaurant in the world one day it was closed so we weren't like too cringy about this but there it is so the very last place that I want to tell you about, we actually did 
the day that we landed, so on the um, Friday afternoon, but it's the most special place to me, so I wanted to save it till last. And that is Yonobi, Copenhagen. Inspired by the Japanese word Yonobi, which means beauty in practical objects made by craftsmen with the aim to balance the aesthetic and the functional, which is perfect. Yonobi is an incredibly special place to me. I first visited them in 2016 when I was just a baby ceramicist starting my ceramics journey in London. And Yonobi actually was a baby as well. They had just started. Back then it was a ceramics shop with some resident potters there. And since then they've moved a couple of times and they have set up studios to teach classes as well as selling their lovely ceramics in Copenhagen and um, a couple of other places around Denmark too. I was very lucky to meet with the owner, Nana, to see some of the beautiful ceramics that they have on the shelves and to check out the teaching studios. I hadn't seen the teaching studios before so it was very cool to see and I I really enjoy kind of seeing how other places do things. Everyone there was so nice, even though I was just this weirdo like filming, walking around being like, hi. <laughs> Yonobi is in the process of setting up a cafe actually in their Copenhagen store and will be launching a very cool new concept, a pinch pot cafe. So you'll be able to visit, look at the lovely ceramics, get a coffee, but also get some clay and you can enjoy the making process without the commitment and kind of the pressure of signing up to a full on class. Nana is a true appreciator of ceramics and I think that us potters need more people like her to really understand the love and the imperfections and the soul of the handmade is something that not everybody values but it's very much felt in Yonobi and honestly in Copenhagen in general. Our trip was filled with so many highs and after only two and a half days we're sadly going home but with very full hearts and full bellies. I missed so many places that were on my list so I have no choice but to be back one day to tick them all off which is fine. <laughs> It's truly one of my favorite places in the whole world. If you do want the whole places of places that we did and didn't visit, check out the description of the video and make sure you comment below if you have any more recommendations that haven't made it onto the list. Thank you very much for joining me on this field trip and I will see you next week. Goodbye. Makers with their design. I'm out. <laughs>